when the Fed did raise uh, hikes at probably one of the fastest paces in its history, it did, uh, you know, take the punch bowl away. It made borrowing costs uh, more expensive, especially for these highly leveraged companies. And a lot of them were in the broader crypto space. <laughs> so right. you saw blow ups happening all over the place. And uh, today, actually, SEC chair Gary Gensler was quoted as saying crypto is full of fraud, abuse and misconduct. And Tone, you know, I've seen you on camera debating uh, Richard Hart and calling out Alex Mashinsky. And so I wanted to get your takes about what we've seen in the despair market, because to me, it's been pretty vicious for any kind of bad actor. I mean, it's been like a bleach, just kind of cleaning out all these people uh, from the industry who didn't act, uh, you know, with with good ethics, <laughs> essentially. And right. so I wanted to get your opinion on this bear market, about what we've seen, about what we're hearing from Gary Gensler now. Um, what are your thoughts? So I know a lot of people don't like Gary Gensler. I actually like Gary Gensler. Uh, the reason why I like Gary Gensler is because I think of every single government employee, anyone that gets paid uh, through the government, He's probably the most knowledgeable person when it comes to Bitcoin, crypto, the crypto ecosystem. Now, you may disagree with what he does with that knowledge, but there is no denying that Gary Gensler is the most knowledgeable government official on Bitcoin, shitcoins, uh, all things crypto. And uh, I don't think he wants to launch that ETF for Bitcoin. And he has borderline legitimate reasons for doing so. And uh, yeah, and all this stuff blows up. Uh, I've been, when I was doing, I don't know, did you catch my presentation at BitBlock Boom? Uh, yeah. When yeah. I, yeah. The one thing I forgot to mention because I ran out of time is why do we so, see so many like scammy blow ups at the top of the bull run and at the bottom of the bear market? And the only conclusion I have for that is when the bull market is coming to an end and people have gotten a lot wealthier, they start to pull money out of some of their investments in order to buy cool shit that they want to finally afford. And that's what a lot of these Ponzi schemes can't afford to give them their money. And like things like BitConnect blow up at the very top of the market. Now, the same thing almost happens at the bottom of a bear market, but for opposite reasons. When the market has been going down for so long and you've been struggling because, you know, your crypto investments aren't doing so good, Eventually, you need additional liquidity to buy things because you have no choice. You can't wait anymore. So you're like, man, you know, I don't mind holding uh, my money at like FTX or uh, Celsius, but, you know, I got to I got to buy a new refrigerator. It broke. And uh, people start pulling their money out because they just don't have any other places they can pull it from. And that's when these scams also get exposed at the bottoms of the bear market because they can't meet the organic demand of people wanting additional money that they thought they had because now they have to make ends meet at the end of a bear market. And that's how these things tend to play out. Yeah, yeah. And you mentioned Gary Gensler. I mean, one of the main reasons why the SEC has rejected a spot Bitcoin ETF over the years was fears of market manipulation, fraud, um, a lot of the volumes being in these unregulated offshore exchanges. And uh, certainly we've seen some of that get cleaned up over the last uh, years with FTX blowing up and yada, yada, yada. Um, but now you have the big boys coming in like BlackRock. And today we had Franklin Templeton uh, file a spot Bitcoin ETF. Uh, they have $1.5 trillion of assets under management. And um, what do you guys think around this spot Bitcoin ETF? You know, to me, it's been a rumor for so long. It's right around the corner. They're going to approve one. It's going to cause all this increased demand. But I look at today and it feels different. It feels like you have these big dogs that are applying. Um, it seems like there's a lot of optimism that one is going to get approved soon. And to me, the price isn't really reflecting that, that probability. Uh, to me, it's increased probability. And the price is kind of just kind of floating around shopping sideways. So, Dr. Jeff, what do you, what do you, what's your take on the spot Bitcoin ETF applications that we've seen and, and the price action kind of surrounding it? 
Yeah, again, not to be this guy that just keeps saying the same thing, but uh, I just think it's the, the liquidity, right? So the liquidity is sucking the oxygen out of the room. So I think that's what's mm-hmm. holding down the price. Also, Global M2 has just been trending down since the first quarter. Um, so it's hard for Bitcoin. Basically, what what the way I look at that is that sets the tone for the vector of the response. So so it, it'll tell you how, how hard it's going to go in what direction, and it'll tell you which direction it's going to go uh, based on where liquidity is flowing. So just the fact that you know liquidity and M- global m2 are kind of heading sort of down sideways to down tells me that even with this this sort of good news behind the scenes with these possible spot bitcoin etfs um that they they're just having a hard time reacting uh, positively to it we saw that little boost when when blackrock came on and you know it jumped up to 30k and but then it's fizzled since then i just think you know um that that's I, well, let's 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 back up a little bit. I think it's inevitable that these spot Bitcoin uh, ETFs do get approved, probably within uh, you know the next year. Like I would say, ninety to ninety-five percent certainty within a year they'll be approved. Will they get approved this year? I don't know. Coin flip. It could be. We could get a good announcement in October. If I will say, if that is something that causes the price of Bitcoin to spike. Uh, in the near term, I would think that it's probably going to go up uh, too far too fast in the setting of the stuff we talked about earlier, besides liquidity, you know, the slowing uh, economic engine, uh, inflation uh, still being persnickety, uh, and then the Fed on top of that continuing its its hawkish stance. Um, I just don't think the conditions are favorable at all for a Bitcoin bull run right now. I think everything in my mind is setting up for the second half of 2024. So basically, as we head into the uh, having, and then after that, I think all the pieces that at that point should be in place. I think we hopefully by then are, ha, would have gotten into and through the worst of the recession. And I think that the central banks will have gone from being hawkish to being uh, you know, dovish at that point and fully supporting the market at that point. So I think liquidity will be flowing again. Um, uh, the economy will have bottomed and is starting to grind higher, even though lots of people still don't trust it or believe it. And to me, that's setting the stage for now we have the infrastructure in place. Now we have these huge players in place with the Black Rocks and Fidelities and whatnot. Uh, and that's setting the stage for a pretty exciting late 2024 and most of 2025. Hmm. Tone, what yeah, are your thoughts? I'd love to comment on this. Uh, Jeff, I agree with you. I think the real bulk of the bull market will start in the second half of 24. Uh, so we agree there. Uh, now, one Gary Gensler says that the main reason why Bitcoin ETF is not being launched is the manipulation on uh, they don't have full control of the price mechanism and price discovery. I think that's an excuse. I don't believe him. Uh, so there are, I think, two reasons uh, that why they don't want to do it. One, and I'm not going to dive deep into this one because it's obvious, custody. Uh, custody is not easy. Uh, custody of Bitcoin. And uh, as everyone's learning, you guys at Swan, I mean, you guys know how challenging custody is. And uh, custody is probably a concern that they don't talk about. But the real reason, I think, and this is where I go back to what I said about Gary Gensler. He does not want a shitcoin ETF on his watch. Not Ethereum, not Doge, not uh, Hex ETFs. Because he knows the moment he approves a Bitcoin ETF, a thousand ETF applications are coming in for every shitcoin. It's a thousand times 10, right? Because there's 10 companies that want to launch an ETF. And each one of them is going to try to launch a shitcoin ETF. And he's not going to let that happen. Uh, we already have an Ethereum CME future, which I'm sure she's very angry about. When he approved uh, Barry Silver's GBTC, here comes the Ethereum version and the Ripple version and all the other scam coins known to man. They already had to cancel the Ripple one, they may bring it back because the SEC incompetently screwed up the Ripple case. Now, had the SEC won the Ripple case on all three counts, and they would have been able to use that precedent to go after Ethereum, they would have made it clear that everything other than Bitcoin is a security. And then they can easily approve the Bitcoin ETF because then they would have a reason to shut down the other ETFs. But uh, this is why Gary Gensler will not allow a Bitcoin ETF. Gary Gensler would have to be replaced. He might be replaced by someone from BlackRock. And that person will launch a Bitcoin ETF and then probably allow the shitcoin ETFs. But if this is happening in 2025, then all of them might be imploding by now so that, you know, free market could actually do its thing. So I think that's the main reason why the ETF has not been happening and it isn't coming. Uh, so that's kind of uh, my view on it. And uh, one more thing to add, 
He's learning this right now. They allowed Coinbase to go public. Uh, SEC made it clear that, yes, we're letting them go public, but we're not vouching for their underlying business. Coinbase's underlying business became promoting scam tokens. And now the SEC wants them to shut down scam coin trading. And the SEC, and everyone is saying, well, if they were trading scams, why did the SEC let Coinbase go public, right? This Imagine this discussion, but times 10 in the world of ETFs. There's no way Gary Gensler will allow a Bitcoin ETF for those reasons. And he will use every excuse he can, including the dog ate my homework and I'm feeling sick. I can't make it to the meeting. Uh, that's kind of my view on the ETF being approved.